On this program from Japan, we travel to the southern island of Kyushu and the prefecture of Oida. Oida is world famous for its hot springs, natural beauty, and historic cultural sites. Oida proves again and again, no matter how far you get from Tokyo, you're always close to the heart of Japan. This is America and the world visits Oita, Japan. This is America and the world is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. Uso Shrine has been around for just about a thousand years and is one of Japan's cultural treasures. It's a Shinto shrine located deep in a forest. I spoke with the acting chief priest to learn about the belief system of the Shinto religion and the story behind this beautiful and colorful Usa Shrine. Usa Shrine, a national treasure of Japan. Why so? Usa Shrine is very important for Japan as well as the imperial family of Japan. This is really the valuable structure for the imperial family as well. Hachiman structure is considered to be very delicate, elaborate way of constructing structures and it has a long history of building in this manner. How old is the shrine? It is believed that the deity of Usa shrine manifested in the year 571 AD and in the year of 725 the main shrine was erected. So Shinto, is it a religion, a philosophy, or a value system? It is a religion. And does it have a single god? We have a number of deities. We have an eight million divine spirits and we also believe that gods exist in all things in nature. Is the shrine dedicated to one god or to one person? We have three shrines in the precinct of Usa shrine. In the first shrine, divine spirit of Emperor Ojin. In the second shrine, Three goddesses are enshrined. They have been considered to be the goddesses to be in charge of this area. In the third shrine, the Emperor Jingu's divine spirit is enshrined. How many priests are here at the shrine? There are altogether 14 priests. And are there women uh, involved as well? We have 10 shrine maidens. Ah. And what is your responsibility as acting chief priest? We priests, during the time of uh, prayers, we perform chanting so that the wishes of the visitors, the prayers, will be sent up to the deity. Where does Shintoism and this beautiful uh, shrine uh, fit into Japanese culture? A numerous number of shrines do exist in Japan. And since olden times, Japanese people have been engaged in agriculture. 
So, in order to show appreciation to the God of the nature, Japanese people have prayed for a long time, since olden times. In the past, they worshipped the God in appreciation for the good harvest. But nowadays, in Japan, they come to shrines in their daily lives. For example, when they have a first child, they come to pray at the shrine. When they get married, they come here to pray for the good luck of the marriage. And also, when people die, they come to the shrine to pray as well. Thank you so much for our conversation. Thank you very much. I appreciate your hospitality so very much. The prefecture of Oida in Japan is its own success story, and its diverse economy keeps reinventing itself with the times. The governor of Oida is both charming and very forward-thinking. Oida has a great reputation, very, very successful. Tell us what we should know kind of an overview of the prefecture. So this ne ano ma warare ba minasan ti We have been making efforts so that uh, our prefecture will be known to as many people as possible. We have been working for that for a long time and we have been achieved a um, few things and I like to share with you three major things that I like you to take a close look at. The first one is onsen, hot spring. In terms of the number of hot spring wells, as well as the yield of hot water, we are actually number one in the world. Well, maybe Yellowstone could be number one, but humans do not use it. So, in terms of the fact that uh, hot springs here in Oita is utilized by humans, I believe that we are the number one in the world. And second, we are rich in nature. We have beautiful landscape. Third, because of the fact that we have beautiful nature, rich nature, we are blessed with food as well, food from mountains, food from the ocean. They are very delicious. So these are the three things that I'd like you to experience firsthand. Number one on the governor's list of not to be missed in Oida experiences is the world famous hot springs. The Japanese love their hot springs and for many tourists, the Euphoween Hot Springs Resort is a major destination. We visited the Tamanoyu Hotel to learn about hot springs, or as they say in Japanese, onsen. What is a hot spring? Onsen is the blessing of the nature. In the underground, water is warmed and warmed up and used as a hot spring. Do the volcanoes have anything to do with the hot springs? In order to have good onsen, we have to have a lot of mountains. Also, we have to have the right environment. We have to have the volcanic mountain ranges. And we have one, and the range is connected to the basin, and from the basin, hot springs come out. So when we go into the hot spring, uh, what are the benefits? Your bodies will be warm, and you can refresh yourself, and you can get rid of your fatigue. What is in the Japanese uh, culture uh, that attracts them so much to the uh, hot springs? What is there about it that makes it so popular? I think Japanese people enjoy onsen a lot because they can enjoy nature. They can enjoy beautiful landscape while relaxing by bathing in onsen. How long would they spend in the hot spring? It depends on each individual. Some people bathe for 20 minutes, but some people bathe for more than one hour. 
And it's not just once. Some people bathe two times, three times, or even four times a day. This area that we're in, Euphoine, are there many different hotels? Yes, there are. We have hotels, we have Western hotels, we have Japanese hotels, we have small-scale Japanese inns. Altogether, we have more than 100 hotels and inns. Tell me about this hotel. What makes this one so special? Our hotel is located in the nature of 10,000 square meters, and we have independent rooms scattered on the site. In addition to the beautiful uh, hotel and the grounds, uh, the uh, town looks very alive. What is in the town for people to do, to experience, uh, to see, to eat? They come to stay in one of those hotels or inns in Yufuin as if they are coming back to their hometown. So there's uh, shops uh, and uh, restaurants and uh, souvenirs to buy. Uh, what else? They can take a nice walk in the morning. They can enjoy a very good walk um, in the city of Yufuin. And you have the beautiful mountain, and you also have a lake in the area. So we have the hotels, your hotel, you're the chairman. So this would be a wonderful place to come for a little vacation. Think of all the people that you've made happy. Many famous people have come to stay at our hotel, not only from Japan, but also from all over the world. So we have been able to promote how good Yufuin is to the rest of the world. Thank you very much for our conversation. It is so good to be with you. Thank you. So as far as the economy is concerned, agriculture is very important. And my reading says uh, number one or close to number one in so many fruits and vegetables. Talk a little bit about agricultural products. In terms of agriculture and um, fishery, there are many production sites, so they are very prevalent throughout Oita Prefecture. But in terms of the production value, it accounts only 2% of the total, whereas manufacturing accounts for 25% of the total production value. About 50 years ago, Oita Prefecture was designated by the national government as the Industrial Promotion District. As a result of that, steel industry, oil chemical, shipbuilding, all those and heavy industries started to locate themselves in Oita Prefecture, and they are still very active, even today. Another type of industry is semiconductor, and also precision machines, as well as automobiles. They have their production bases here in Oita Prefecture. About the medical industry, we have companies which manufacture medical devices for blood-related products, as well as blood vascular-related products. Uh, these are to uh, purify the viruses in the blood or to take out toxins from the blood. The filters are manufactured by those companies. Now we turn to tourism. Very important, huh? We want people to come to Oita. Hot springs. We've just come from the uh, Shinto Shrine. Beautiful scenery. How do we get more people to come to Oita? Well, of course, we like to have many people from Japan to come to Oita. But I think uh, we are going to focus more on inbound tourism, which is to invite more overseas tourists to come to Oita Prefecture. 
So we have investigated on what are the areas that the overseas uh, tourists are interested in. The result is that, well, first, they are very much interested in onsen hot shrinks. They love it. And also, they love the beautiful nature that we can offer here in Oita Prefecture. And also, I think it is important for them to taste good food here. On top of that, we have traditional culture. We have temples, shrines, and also we have old festivals. There is another thing. A famous architect designed the prefectural art museum two years ago. It is really an edgy structure. The people from overseas are enjoying the building. Moreover, I believe that um, we have to offer a type of tourism in which people can experience. For example, they will go to a village and harvest vegetables, fruit, and then uh, with those and harvested fruit and vegetables, they cook. So we really have to prepare that type of entertainment tourism as well. One of the major cultural attractions in Oida are the stone Buddhas located in the town of Usuki. Amazingly so, and close by were also Christian tombs, a true relic from a time when Christianity was briefly introduced to Japan. We visited both sites with a local cultural expert. How did the Buddha uh, stone carvings come about? How did that happen? Whose idea was it and who did the carving? We do not know when, how, why these images have been carved. We found out that these images could have been built in the 12th century from the shapes of the Buddhas as well as the researches of archaeology. How many carvings are there? How many statues of Buddha? 61 images which have clear figures. The panorama that we have here, how many of the Buddhas? 13. So in other areas, there are more Buddhas. There are altogether 61 images, and they are divided into four clusters. The uh, Buddhas carved in stone is very unusual, isn't it? Yes, that's right. It was easier to carve on stones than on done with woods. So if there are 61, a Buddha carvings, do they all have a different expressions, uh, attitude, different faces? One of them is to show gentle faces. Another one is to show angry faces. This is now a job to conserve and protect all of these wonderful stone images. Is that a difficult task? It is a very tough job to do. Our principle is that what we have today here should be preserved for another 1,000 years. When we leave this area, we're going to go to another area uh, here where there is a Christian tomb. Is that quite unusual to have Buddhism and Christianity in the same area? I think it is a very interesting case from the world perspective. Christianity was first introduced to Japan in the 16th century with the sharp sensibilities for religions. Some chose Christianity, the others chose Buddhism. At that time, we had the feudal lord named Otomo Sori. He had Buddhism as his religion. At the same time, he had very keen interest in Christianity as well. And he was converted and became Don Francisco. So he converted from Buddhism to Christianity. 
He converted to Christianity. According to the records of the Jesuit society, he came to believe that Christianity is superior. But he did not abolish Buddhism. Instead, he nurtured both. That's why we have a great mixture of Buddhism and Christianity remained here. After leaving the stone Buddhas, we drove for a few minutes and visited a very rare religious site in Japan, Christian tombs. First, we believed in Buddhism. Then we had a union of Buddhism and Christianity. Christianity came with the missionaries, is that correct? Christianity was introduced to Japan by the Christian missionary named Francisco Xavier. These are all tombstones of the Christians who lived from 16th to 17th centuries. The difference is that the two of them do not have cross. The two of them do have cross. Those ones without uh, carving of cross belong to the commoners who believed in Christianity. Among the Christians in the villages, only those people who made accomplishments were afforded to have this type of tombstone. So do we know uh, even in broad strokes of the brush who is buried here? in this tomb? We don't know exactly, but at least we know that those people who were able to get the cross on their tombstone were the ones who had very influential and powerful among the re religious groups. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. This area, Owita, attracts students from, I read, 90 different countries. Why do they come to study here? Inside the prefecture, there are altogether 3,400 international students. Well, actually, in terms of the population density, that number is actually number one in Japan. No, it's not Tokyo, it's not Kyoto, but Oita, which has the largest international student population density. And 2,900 students out of 3,400 international students are now studying in APU. And also, we value them as very important human resources after graduating from the university. We want them to work in Japan. So, we would provide support so that they can find a place to work in Japan, or we could even make investment in them so that they would work in Japan. Governor, we're at the end of our time. I thank you for your hospitality, your warmth, your personal warmth in welcoming our entire team. You said you had one problem. This interview, problem solved. Problem solved. Problem solved. <laughs> thank you.
Special thanks to ANA Airlines and the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. For information about This is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can now listen to all of our ambassador interviews on our new podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.